Hi everyone, my name is Elena Danan, emissary for the Galactic Federation of World and a very old soul who came back to help you go through these changing times. I would like today to remind you the very simple key that can help you get out of this matrix of mind control and deception. This key is sovereignty. Stop worshipping. Stop worshipping anything. Anything. Worship is mind control. Fear mind control. It's enslaving your mind, your behavior, even your thoughts to a belief system that has been created to enslave you and give your power away to a religious institution. The people at the head of this religious institution, there are several institutions like this, but as a very powerful one who actually rules the, wo the world with the Illuminati. This institution starts by the letter V and it's somewhere in Italy. They have put in place a fear mind control belief system that has one purpose, keeping you dumb, enslaved, ignorant and obedient. Stop worshipping these people, this institution. And I'm going to take you very quickly through the history of how all of this happened. How you are to this day disconnected from God creator and worshipping false gods and an institution that is a religious government. Several hundred thousand years ago on earth, exactly 374,000 years ago, arrived ETs from the Sirius B star system. They were known later as Anunnaki, but in many cultures, they took all the names. They were the gods, the custodians. This expedition that arrives, arrived uh, from Sirius B um, 300,000 years ago, they carried a mixed crew. Some of the crew were geneticists and scientists arriving to study a new world and these lights, their life forms and pretty much respecting the universal law of prime directive of non-intervention in the evolution. But at the head of this expedition was a very evil being named Yu or Enlil, commander of armies of space armies of the sky, as translated in from Sumerian. This being was a reptilian because the Anunnaki are not one species. They are like the Federation. They are compound of different races. You can find humans, you can find reptiloids, you can find greys and other species. That's the Anunnaki. With all this particularity in common that uh, relates to their origin in um, their um, original galaxy, um, Urea, it's the elongated skull more or less regarding species. Uh, in Nataru galaxy, it's very rare to see elongated skull. There are genetic traits, uh, you know, some galaxies, they, they are mixing together and a genetic trait that is, is going to uh, take over the other uh, genes, you know, so everybody will end up more or less with this characteristic in one galaxy. So that's for the Anunnaki uh, named of their own name, the Anachim, plural of Anach, which is also the name of their language. And Lil was a reptilian. And there's a whole story that I described in the Cedars, my book, and also through my videos and webinars, uh, and Lil was the son of Anu and a reptilian queen, Sikar queen, um, Tia. And Lil wanted to take over the earth. <clears throat> And he did, because he had the power, the armies, and 
his half brother Yuman Anach, Ia, known as Enki, tried to stop him. And Lil asked requests from Ia and his teams of geneticists to modify, dumb down these humans who are on earth, these hominids, to become good slaves, strengthen their physical power, their muscles, and dumbing them down by blocking the evolution of some genes in their DNA. And he didn't want to do that. So Enlil uh, created, put different laboratories with other geneticists. And they were all on Earth to do the job he wanted. Meanwhile, Ia was perfecting the perfect activated human in secret on board the Nibiru. The Eden, the biodome, the biosphere laboratory on board the Nibiru with Nino Sag and others of his team. Of course, because Enlil had the military power, he took over Earth and he beat Ia, who was expelled and had to flee. He was back today. Stronger than ever, bringing us help. At the time, so Enlil engineered a race of people, of slave humans, uh, that would do all the chores for them and would be a, like, you know, cattle, slave workers, inferior animals. That's how he considered humans through to this day. Unhappy with that because humans are humans and we like to get socially together and, and create societies and unite and love and, you know, and that wasn't going well, the plans of Enlil. So Enlil um, destroyed humanity. That was the Younger Dryas period. Reset the world. That was when there was this huge battle before, just a bit before, and and he lost and had to leave against his will, desperately. And Lil and his people, his reptilian Anachim people and allies, remain custodian of Earth after the younger Dryas event. And they did it differently. They created a society where they would build it as a pyramid and virtually and Enlil will be at the head of it and his son Ninota and there would be human minions in the intermediary levels who would obey to the head and keep humanity enslaved. That's where you find all the levels of the pyramid with, well, you know, I cannot name them, they here, but F, M, the petrol cartels, the banks, and all those who maintain you enslaved and striving for survival, then you do not have the energy and the mind to focus on your spiritual evolution. They cash up from your ignorance. They maintain you in this ignorance. Well, this hasn't happened only at the level of the governments, but first of all, and deeper than everything, at the religious level, because you needed to enslave the minds of humanity. They needed to get humanity to bow on their knees and worship them as their gods and obey and be fearful that if they don't obey, they'll burn, and they'll burn in hell. That's the big V institution. They create this institution to enslave you in fear, to make you down on your knees, 
believing that you were born in sins, that you need to obey and worship in order to be cleared of your sins. This is so obvious. This is so evil. But you've all, many of you believe that because you were formatted since early childhood into believing this because your parent had been formatted the same. It is time you break this, break the cycle with your kids. Tell your kids, stop worshiping. I've been manipulated. You won't because here is the truth, my child. You'd never need an institution to tell you what to believe because you have the direct connection in your heart with God, the creator. The word God must cease to be employed. God, Lord, all of these things that make you put into an inferior position regarding the creation. In truth, the whole creation is equal. There is one core consciousness that creates everything, that generates consciousness, offshoots of consciousness, that generates matter, that organizes the structure of the universe. I've seen it. I have seen the whole structure. This core singularity is the core consciousness of everything. In a non-linear time, in a non-metric space, out of time, out of space, but still, it is time and it is space. If you connect with your heart, you can understand that. If you're connected. Because the real knowledge is not obtained by books, by listening to people talking, by, by experiencing and connecting. Source consciousness project fractals of itself, herself, into matter, to animate matter. And it propels fractals of itself in everything that it's alive. A fractal is um, a partition from an original a material. So you are it and it is you. You are creator and it is you. Your soul, not the body. The bodies are temporary envelopes that carries the soul for a little while, for an incarnation. The soul is in, in, isn't eternal. The soul is eternal. Okay? Eternal means it has no beginning, ni end, nor end. Eternal in time. Immortal means that cannot die, and that applies to matter. That's another story and an exception. Source consciousness creator fractaled itself one day, sends a little offshoot of himself, herself or itself, I like to call it herself, on a planet on a world that was able to bear life. And this little offshoot of consciousness embedded into um, protozoa, into cells, into little animals, plants, and whatever strives on this planet. And one day went through all the cycles of, of evolution for this consciousness to evolve and become self-aware and start to think and evolve and be confronted to ordeals in, in, in order to evolve. Until one day, on Earth, for instance, ah, you're human. Oh, wow. You're still connected to source because quantumly 
speaking. Your heart is connected to the heart of the universe, of the multiverse. You have direct connection from the heart. And also, you can interact and communicate with source and the whole knowledge of the universe by the pineal gland. The pineal gland is the portal, is the vortex that can propel your consciousness out of your body and merge with anything in the universe you want to merge with and access the universal knowledge. The pineal gland is a third eye, which is within the brain. And the dark ones have done everything they could to calcify it by fluoride and other things and to lock it. And this very same institution, listen to me now, this very same institution, the big V in Italy, the religious one, you know, with the, the guy at the top. This institution created a ritual that they do at every child and they call that the baptism. You don't need to be baptized. You have a direct connection. What's going on? This ritual involves that the priest puts his hand and in kind of a sacred oil or oil or something, and he does the sign of the cross on the forehead of the child. This is a magical ritual to block a door, to block the pineal gland, to close the door. It is very simple to get out of this. In a meditation state, by your own power, your own will, you connect to your core of your being and you have connection to source. And then you do it reverse on your forehead. I'm not going to do it to me because I've done it already. I'm liberated. But you say, you do it reverse. You say to yourself, I am setting myself free. Three times. I reopen the door. My final gland is open. I set myself free. Do it three times because three times in a magical number in a ritual. Okay, that's one thing I want to say. So this institution uh, is going to tell the child from a young age that he was born in sin. What horrible things to say, what a horrible, terrible lie <laughs> at the pace of it, because a child is innocent, has a connection with everything. A child is only love. I want to make friends and nice, and it's going to have to learn about life, of course. But child is pure, it's untouched, unspoiled. How can you say? How can you believe when a priest tells you that a child, a newborn, has sins? How come? It's, it's just born, it has done anything bad. Wow. Do you believe that? that? That's insane. That how they condition you to believe this, this nonsense. Another thing, obey, bow. Otherwise, fear the anger of the God and, and you will burn in the flames of hell for eternity if you do not obey to the institution. Oh, tremble, tremble. Worship the institution. Worship the false god. There's no god. There is the creator source that is equal to all its creation because it is its creation and you are it. You have no idea of your own power. I swear you have no idea how powerful you are. You are. You don't need churches, you don't need insti religious institution, you do not need priests. You have direct connection and stop fearing. Good God fearing worshiper. Oh my God. 
That sounds so bad. A good, obedient slave to an institution. Stop that. Stop fearing. Fear is manipulation. Fear is mind control. And worship means they own you. They own you. One day, um, 2,000 years ago, uh, the good E.T. sent um, a hybrid guy, his name was Yeshua, to try to wake up people and get them away from Yahweh, Yahweh who was played out by Enlil. Yeshua tried to explain everyone that Yahweh wasn't a god. He wasn't his father anyway, but he wasn't a god and people need to stop worshipping this evil, bloodthirsty uh, uh you know, wicked uh, entity who wanted virgin, virgin girls for himself, who want people to, to kill and eat their own children, who was always steering war, bloodshed, was the reptilian and Lil. Yeshua tried to warn everyone. This ended up badly for him. He didn't die. He survived this, that's another story, but the institution of Yahweh, this horrible slave master, got Yeshua to be tortured and put as an example as you do not resist the institution. The Yahweh cult and the Roman Empire became one. At that moment. Now it's called the Holy Roman Empire. Yeshua, when he says, I'm the way, he truly is. He came at one point to save humanity, to wake everybody up. But he was, his teaching and what he did was hijacked by the, this evil institution. Because, for the reasons, they didn't want humanity to listen to this guy. So they, when they, they cannot kill um, a belief system or a message, they will hijack it and change the narrative, reverse it. The symbol of Yeshua nailed on a cross is a symbol of the dark institution led by Enlil and Yahweh, victory upon love, freedom, and sovereignty. So if you wear this at your neck, you are wearing the symbol of the victory of the dark upon love. And you are told, oh, he died for our sins. That's BS. Because when you think about, first, it's BS, but second, when you think about it, that means, oh, he redeemed all the sins of humanity for all the times past and to come. That means pedophiles can do their, 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 their dirty job. Uh, murderers can do their dirty jobs. That's fine. Jesus died for my sins. I can do whatever horrible things I want. I'll be, you know, he redeemed me already. Oh my God. That's encouraging these things. And there's always, there's also other meanings to this. I'm here to help you wake up. If you are Christian, look at the bright side of Christianity. Throw away fear, worship, and obedience. And stand up on your feet as a pillar of the universe, as we all are. There is no center. Physically, every one of us are the pillar. We are pillars of power, 
like our plant of connection with source. Through fear, worship, and obedience. That's the bad ones. That comes from the custodian slave masters. Embrace, love, tolerance, sovereignty, and freedom. You really need a book to tell you what's wrong or right to do? Are you a child? You're not. You're more than that. You are beautiful, wise, knowledgeable beings that just have been restrained for a while. But it's behind now. Wake up. If you are Christian, follow the path of Yeshua, of course, but not in the way they've hijacked the narrative in the true message of his. When he says, what I can do, you can do too, and you will do even more. When he says, the kingdom of the creator is within you, it really is. Also, drop the communion thing because it's a cannibalism reptilian ritual that mentally lead you to accept to eat flesh and drink blood this is satanic it's fine you just need to recalibrate on the path of Yeshua his love he said, I am the way. He truly is because he is love, tolerance. He showed you, just as Buddha showed you, that you are direct connection with the Creator. You do not need churches, you do not need priests, intermediaries. That's mind control. Stand up. We are all, every one of us, our own priest. This body is uh, your own church, your own sanctuary. Respect it. Take care of it. Hold it like sacred. Fill it with love. And inside, this body is the true house of God. Even if I don't like the term God, creator. The evil extraterrestrials have gone, although there are still on earth those who praise their ancient slave master reign, such as those who want to restore Yahweh slash and Lil Power cult, the Zionist, the the older that these people who worshipped Yahweh. Well, they won't win because Yahweh is gone and Lil is gone. His son Ninota is gone. The bad ETs have been expelled from Earth and the star system. Catch the bird flying, catch the train towards the future. Christians follow what Christianity is really about. Sovereignty, love for each other, and direct connection with the Creator. The path of love, love, love. Through the books, the, the, the Bible, things that, well, you can keep it as a, um, a testimony of how custodian ETs have been manipulating humans. Yeah, you can look at it like this. Um, I would recommend strongly, you Christians, please, 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 please try it. There are three people in this world whom I hold in great esteem in this field of research and 
who are explaining all of this from their, their point of view of scholarship in different domains. Paul Wallis, Mauro Biglino, and Corinna Pataki. Please read their books. I advise also to read The Gods of Eden by William Bramley. This will open your eyes. This is for the Christians. Please. Paul Wallis, Moro Biglino, Corinna Pataki, and William Bramley. I am not alone in this fight to help you open your eyes. Stop worshipping. Stop fearing. Get up on your feet. It's over. Kneeling is over. Now it's time. You take back your sovereignty, your dignity as human. It's time now. And follow, recalibrate onto the path of love and power. Empower yourself in this whole universe with a single origin creator. Every life form that are on all the worlds are also equally children of the creator because also they are it and it is them. Same as on earth. We're not alone in the universe. And all the aliens, extraterrestrial, they are also equally as earthlings, children of the creator. Extraterrestrials are not demons. That is a manipulation of the big institution to make you believe this and fear them. A little whale that was born on Neptune, in the deep waters of Neptune or Enceladus, or any other world, this little baby whale, alien-looking like a whale, carries no evil. It is not a demon. It is a beautiful child of the Creator. It is not on Earth. A tangly baby being born on one of the planets of the Trappist star system is a innocent little child, tangry, tangry, looking like a tangry with tentacles and stuff. This child, this tangry child, is also a child of God because its consciousness is a fractal of the same creator that created you. You are brothers in the creation. This little tangry child is innocent has done nothing bad. Aliens are not demons. The real demons are on this planet. They have manipulated you for eons of time into coercing you to bend on your knees and fear them and worship them and obey them. Stop giving your power away to these demons. Stand up in your own sovereignty and divinity. Because when you stop giving your power away to the demons, they lose power and they die. It is time, humanity, to Take back your house. You can do this. Anyway. No.